All right, Harry, I'm, I'm kind of excited to see what you're going to show us next on the thing. We've looked at the threads, we've looked at the gearing, which is really cool. So what are, what are we going to talk about this week? What are you going to show? Okay, so I just wanted to show you some of the joinery and, and a pocketing technique that I came up with to help me to easily assemble some of the parts. Okay. Uh, so anyway, I decided to, to go ahead with a, a dovetail joint in this because I wanted a good mechanical lock there. So if you use mortise and tenons or lap joint, something like that, the odds are out in the weather, yeah. over time, it's a possibility they're going to fail. Well, right, and, they, and this was designed to take apart, so you're, you know, so that you can come back and kind of, you know, oil it up with a little bit of mineral oil or whatever after you're done using it. And I, so I just knew that it was going to be, you know, kind of tw twisted and, and torqued a little bit. Yeah. So it doesn't come apart here. You obviously glued that. Right. So that's that's a permanent joint, and that's never right. going anywhere. Right. What? There's no dovetail bit that big, so what, or that looks like that. So what did you do? <laughs> well, really, I, I just knew that uh, I was going to use a half inch cutter to do it because I needed to plunge all the way through this three and a half inch material to make that. Yeah. So I just drew quarter inch radiuses. Uh, you you know. designed your own dovetail. Yeah. Oh, that's sweet. Well, what's kind of cool about that is it doesn't have to look like this. It could be any oh, type it, of locking joint. Sure. You can design your own. Sure. Yeah. A half moon or. Three-quarter moon or, yeah, or a full, full moon. moon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Now, you also mentioned the pocketing. So what is that? Mean? Okay. Well, so if you want to slide that back, let, I'll take this platen off and kind of show you. Okay. So um, this, this part really kind of made me think of that because I was wondering, well, you know, these are going to be three of them. That's 120 degrees out. You know, uh, it was going to be a little bit difficult to mark that out, and especially to get that placed dead center of this part. Oh, that could be a challenge, trying to get it right in the center. Yeah, okay. so so uh, when I drew this part, uh, I drew these other two parts in the CAD right on top of it, and I had that nice shape going around there, and I just decided, you know what, if I just pocket that down about a 32nd of an inch, I can just slide these parts right in place. I don't have to come back and measure it. And I also um, put put the holes in it to attach the part. Oh, cool. So it's, it's almost like building building with Legos. <laughs> it can only go one location into that little pocket. Right. And it's not real deep. It doesn't have to be. Yeah. It's just a, an alignment real quickly and give you the, the holes. Yeah. So did you use anywhere else on the machine? Well, I did on the tray. So so the, the risers in this tray um, for the basket uh, use the same technique to to align these and, and oh, put them in cool there. What's cool about it too is the screws you know are going to be dead center in, right. the, in the blank. You're not guessing and splitting yeah. out and doing crazy yeah. things. You're just drawing lines and all that kind of crap. I like it. Hey, let's <laughs> step over the machine and you can show me how you set up. Okay, let's those. do it. Well, I noticed that you didn't put this between centers. So what was your thought process here on setting this up? Well, I, I put a laser pointer uh, in the spindle here. And what that allows me to do is using these low profile clamps, I'm able just to, to bring that laser right up to the edge of the if clamp. I turn this on? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, yeah. So you're splitting the beam right on the edge of the clamp. Yeah, so that's giving me about a plus or minus three thousandths right there. So we're pretty close. That's, that's doable. OK, so if you <laughs> drive it up here. Yeah, so just. We're just splitting that edge as well. Right. That's very cool. Right. All right. So now um, you've got this table, and obviously you don't want to machine into the table. So how do you avoid that? Well, so uh, I've got a spoil board right underneath the part here, and it's just a quarter of an inch thick. Oh, so that's what this is. Yeah. So it's just quarter inch MDF uh -huh. because then you can machine into it. And why quarter inch? Well, the nice thing about it is that. These clamps are tall enough that if I use quarter inch, I can still clamp right to my part and I don't have to fix my part to my spoil board. Yeah, last time you used three quarter, and yeah. obviously it puts it above the clamp, as you can see right, right here. And so you had to attach it. Yeah. But by doing this, you just slide it under and clamp it. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> I like it. All right, well, should we set up and start cutting? Sure, let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, so what I just did here is I adjusted my spindle height to accommodate this thick material with a long cutter, and I also wanted to be able to put my smart tool pad under here so that I could reference the Z value for my cutter. And this is just a really nice feature of this machine. It just allows you to adjust the spindle height in the brackets to accommodate for thick material. Okay, so our part's all set up in the machine, so let's hit the go switch and get started.
All right, Harry, some rock solid joinery. That was just the keystone to any great project. You want it to last, right? And this is definitely gonna last, it's awesome. All right, so you got one more thing you're gonna show us in the next class. What's that gonna be? Yeah, so I wanna talk about the construction methods I used on the basket because I wanted to be able to take this apart and clean it just like everything else. And so we're gonna show some really cool stuff in the vertical vise on the machine. That will be cool. All right, I'm looking forward to that. So we'll see you in the next video. Okay.